Hi, this is your host of Nibharti and welcome to TFR Newsroom. Uh, Cloud Foundry Foundation recently announced the results of its latest user survey. To discuss the results of the survey, we have with us once again, Chip Childers, Executive Director of Cloud Foundry Foundation. Chip, it's great to have you back on the show. Always good to talk to you, Swapna. Can you give us an overview of the survey? So the survey is something that we do annually. Um, it's, it's intended to reach uh, not just the users of the, the upstream open source code, um, but also a number of the, the vendors who uh, commercialize Cloud Foundry uh, share it with, with their user base, um, you know, as, as well as some of the, the internal teams that, that take advantage of it as well inside those vendors. A um, you know, great example of that is SAP. They have thousands of developers building business apps on top of, uh, on top of Cloud Foundry. Um, so, so what we try to do is we try to get a picture of um, kind of the, the state of um, opinions uh, within the um, uh, within the, the Cloud Foundry user base. It's, it's certainly not um, a complete picture, uh, but it gives us some pretty interesting insights into um, how users are using the, the technology, um, things that they're thinking about, the benefits that they see, uh, as well as how it's interacting with other technology, other open source projects that they, they consume inside their own, uh, their own organizations. There were three top level uh, findings that, that I think are both um, interesting, but also relatively consistent with uh, historical findings. Uh, so the first one was, you know, what what is Cloud Foundry uh, at its core, right? It's it's about reducing software development cycle times, right? Making a developer experience, um, you know, working with with cloud platforms better. Um, and it turns out when a community builds software that's designed to reduce cycle times, it in fact in fact reduces cycle times. Um, so, you know, before using Cloud Foundry, 65% of the respondents were indicating that it could take up to, you know, one to six months uh, to go from, um, you know, idea to, to production code running and, and supporting users. And then after implementing Cloud Foundry, um, nearly 70%, so 69% of the respondents are saying it takes somewhere between three weeks to less. Um, and importantly, uh, just over 20% of those respondents say that they can they can go from you know initial code um, to running in production in less than a day, and that's really the type of um, uh, of software delivery velocity that everybody's looking for these days. The other two ma major points are one um, that it, it's this is not just for websites and you know some microservices. Th these are it includes mission critical software. So 47%, right? Nearly half of the respondents are saying that they're they're running mission critical software through that same type of high velocity cycle using Cloud Foundry. Um, and, and that's that's phenomenal to see. Um, and then most, I think most importantly for, for our community, um, while, while they're focused on developer experience, they've also made a major shift over the course of 2020 to, to make sure that we, we bring that developer experience to Kubernetes and also spend a lot of effort integrating other cloud native open source projects. Um, and so what we saw was that 57% of organizations are already using Kubernetes and Cloud Foundry together, right? So these are generally composite applications, right? The custom code that you're writing being pushed to Cloud Foundry, um, integrated with backing services that might be deployed to Kubernetes. So our users are gonna see a big benefit as they adopt the, the new architecture. Um, but also interestingly, 30% are already using Istio, 55% are already using Prometheus, um, and then another 30% are already using FluentD, right? So these are these are other projects in the cloud native ecosystem, open source ecosystem. Um, they're already in place. They're things that are being integrated with Cloud Foundry or really making up core parts of our architecture going forward. Um, and it's great to see that, you know, not only is our community making a good shift, to uh, where where users are already adopting other projects, um, but there's a lot of uh, symbiotic relationship we can have with those teams. You answered a lot of questions that I was about to ask. Of course, Kubernetes was of course going to be one of them, and also I was about to ask, you know, what impact Cloud Foundry made, you know, on their you know develop and deploy. You also answered that. Uh, because now customers are users are using both Kubernetes and Cloud. Is there any any you know pattern that you have seen through this survey where they are still either struggling or they need some help? That's a good question. So so the major architectural change that um, that the the Cloud Foundry community made over the course of this year, right, 2020, um, it has not yet hit the majority of the end users, right? So 
we've we've embraced Kubernetes as the next generation infrastructure. Um, we are um, focusing most of the the development effort of our community um, onto you know making that shift. Um, the projects are already releasing you know one o versions, and and we're starting to see it get used. Um, uh, in in a lot of different contexts, right? Um, early trials, as well as um, you know, some of the commercialization of Cloud Foundry has already been packaging it and running it on top of Kubernetes. But I think the 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 survey this year is not able to really capture the benefit of the two coming together as much as it's able to identify that there's a, going to be a clear benefit of them coming together. Um, next year, we'll run another user survey. At that point, we should see a lot more of, of Cloud Foundry's current and future architecture being used in, in production contexts. Um, and I think it'll start to really give us a, a good sense of, uh, of outcomes that are being achieved there. The survey was done, I think, during this pandemic that we are going through. Was there any question to just collect more information on how people's priorities are changing because of this crisis and how Cloud Foundry, because as you mentioned earlier, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of making, it, making them move very, very fast as uh, without Cloud Foundry. Did, did you kind of uh, receive any feedback on that? Yeah, so not, not directly, um, but one of the things that we, we focus on, um, on, on asking kind of year over year is we, we want a sense of how many of the applications being, uh, you know, that use Cloud Foundry as their, um, deployment target, um, how many of them are brand new applications versus how many are uh, kind of re-architectures or, or, or migrations of existing software. Um, and, and we saw that 46% um, of respondents uh, were reporting that they're currently migrating apps, right? That, that's actually a, a very decent number. Um, another 17% indicating that they're either considering or planning, right? So all in, um, you know, you're talking about you know, a little bit over, I guess that'd be over, um, approaching 70% of respondents are saying, listen, you know, we're, we're going to be replatforming or we're already deep into the middle of it. Um, only 10% said they're not doing any major migrations. So um, that's really good to see. Now, I, I think in addition to this survey data, um, when you when you look more anecdotally at how organizations um, are responding or did respond to the pandemic, mostly during the early parts of this year, um, there was a big wave of, of new software uh, that was that was produced, right? Whether it was, um, you know, good good example of this would be the UK government. Um, the parliament passed a series of, of economic support um, policies and the UK, the, I'm sorry, the, yeah, the UK.gov team uh, needed to find a way to allow citizens to register for the economic support um, using Cloud Foundry and a bunch of other open source uh, projects that kind of fit into their tool chain, they were able to go from knowing that this is a, a requirement of parliament to getting it deployed uh, over a weekend, right? So that's the type of rapid response that we saw um, and, and that our, the Cloud Foundry community is very proud to see, not just in, in the government example, but in a lot of corporations that, that needed to respond quickly. Um, so, so new software is being produced, and if you've reorganized yourselves um, in a way that that allows you to be responsive and 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 agile to changing conditions, um, which is again something that CF's there to help support, um, we we see a lot of really good anecdotal outcomes. Awesome, and if I'm not wrong, I think they also were the winners of the user award, community award during the Cloud Foundries. Yeah, they they were right. I mean, it's a really inspirational story, and I'm I'm, I'm bringing it out again because it's one of these things that impacted uh, you know millions of people, right? And you know, but and and frankly, they they were able to be a little bit more public about it than uh, you know perhaps some of the the corporations that are supporting millions of customers and and responding to changing conditions can be. Um, so they're just they're just a really good example, though. Cloud Foundry community has been doing this survey for like very long time. This year has been kind of unique from very different perspective. COVID is one of those. Uh, what will be the focus of the next survey? Because will you be collecting more data points to gather better insight into the community? What, can you talk about that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, so there's there's a few things uh, in particular that I think are important that we're we're looking for. Um, I mentioned previously that the um, 
the benefits of the, the Kubernetes-based architecture are, are something that we're going to want to really understand um, when we approach the end of 2021, because we should start to see it get used um, you know, much more heavily, uh, especially in, in the large organizations, right? So we want to make sure that these benefits are being matched. But the other, the other area that um, you know, our community is focused on is that historically, Cloud Foundry has been very difficult to um, get get installed, right? I mean, I'm I'm not gonna you know mince words about it. It was it was designed by the open source community to be installed in the context of large organizations supporting thousands of developers, and and because of that, it you know kind of the default installation was lots of virtual machines, uh, you know, heavy redundancy, um, you know, large initial scale. And so that was a bit of a burden or, or at least a hurdle for new adopters um, to, to get over. And, you know, some of the commercial distributions would make that a, a lot smoother um, or some chose to make, make the initial install profile a lot smaller. Um, but in terms of open source, like upstream adoption, um, what, what was happening with uh, Cloud Foundry was that we weren't seeing the the small teams of developers that just wanted to make their lives easier adopt the technology on their own outside of going to maybe a as a service provider. So when we look at the organization size for this year's survey, we saw that you know a quarter of the respondents are over a hundred thousand employees. You know another just under a quarter were in the ten thousand to hundred thousand range, um, and then it kind of you know drops down um, to 20% being less than 100 people. What we hope to see is that the, the new form factor of Cloud Foundry is going to allow for a lot, uh, a lot of smaller organizations or even small teams in larger organizations um, to not have to make a, uh, let's say, a, a, a top-down strategic choice, and that those that, that have decided that Kubernetes is their new infrastructure target are going to just want to help themselves interact with the Kubernetes environment in a much smoother way. Um, and you can layer the CF for Kate's project or the kubectl project. You can just layer it right on top of a, a any Kubernetes cluster. And then your developers just get a much better experience. So we hope to see that startups, um, you know, mid-sized companies are going to start to adopt Cloud Foundry because it's easier to adopt now. It gives them those same benefits that the big companies are getting um, in a smaller form factor, which means less infrastructure overhead for it. Um, and so that's one of the things we'll be testing for. Uh, one more thing is, uh, technically, yes, it is becoming easier, but are you also making efforts to, I mean, because when you look at SMBs, you know, no, technically they are not very, very, you know, tech savvy. So they do need some help, whether it's documentation, whether it needs, you know, evangelizing. So what efforts will be beyond tech? To help these kind of users, yeah. So th this is an area where the the you know the foundation team is going to support some of this. Um, you know, we've we've been doing a lot of tutorials. Um, you know, this year we brought on um, uh, you know two uh, developer relations folks uh, who I think you've actually interviewed, Ram and Shadrach. Um, they're going to do a great job of just creating lots of videos. They're going to live stream examples of installing it, uh, write up tutorials for how fast. You know, you know, it's less than ten minutes. You can. Add Cloud Foundry to a DigitalOcean Kubernetes cluster, as an example, or uh, you know GKE. Um, so they're going to provide a, a, a steady stream of of content that will help these smaller organizations get started. But I think what's most important is you know when you're dealing with a um, you know dealing with a community driven project where you have an ecosystem wrapped around it, it's it's all the actions of our community, right? And I was just earlier today talking with um, one of the one of the leads on the CF for Kate's project, and they they see the benefit of making sure that there are really easy on ramps for new users to try the technology. Um, our community is really going to do a lot over the course of next year to make it more approachable, um, to make getting started easier, uh, to 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 help you know end users also make the transition, because that's another area that, that's really important, right? We, we think about not just new adopters, but also the CF community has for years now been bringing its user base along this journey as we've changed architectures um, multiple times. This is just another step in that journey. 
Um, so we're going to look forward to bringing the existing user base along in the journey as well. Chip, thank you so much for talking about the survey and also uh, the focus that you're going to have for next year, and especially with this new breed of users that are coming to the uh, project. Uh, I look forward to talk to you again. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much.